All right, we are recording. Sorry about that. Go ahead, Bianca. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, that that your your um, description of what happened to you and what you were feeling and what you were going through um, is something that uh, Jarrett Tendler really touches on in his book and um, provides some really interesting strategies to not only recognize these emotions, and that's sort of the part that we're working on here is to get everybody to a point where they can recognize the inception of those emotions. But so he, he talks about not the first step is to sort of recognize these emotions or thoughts, but then the next step is to what do you do about them, right? Well, how do you deal with this? Because the, for some people, these triggers that you know cause us to spiral in some way um have been there present for many years and potentially even in other areas of their lives you know the you know not being able to lose or wanting to be right all the time you know there, those are all things that you know pertain to different people not everyone all at once but you know everyone has their own issues and the more you become aware of those and how they can impact your trading, potentially, um, the better the better trader I think you're you're going to be. So, or can become, or whatever you know. So, um, but I wanted to see, uh, based on what we talked about last week, if anyone had any. Um, experiences with some sort of out of the box mindfulness practices, drinking their coffee or doing the dishes or anything like that, that they wanted to share. If you and, would uh, uh, feel free to, I mean, if you want to just post in the chat, feel free or, if, or if you'd rather uh, jump on, if you, if you want to speak, I can, uh, we can unmute, but just give me a heads up in the chat. If you want to say something. And then I'll give you the heads up to go ahead and speak I'll, while we're while anyone's typing their answer or or let me know they want to speak. I'll just I'll kind of jump in and just say you know one thing I've kind of gotten the habit gotten the habit of doing from our between now and our last session was I uh, I I tend to I like to do it when I'm brushing my teeth. <laughs> I was just going to say that that's exactly what I do because it's such a nice you know, succinct amount of time. It's not like, you know, this long drawn out thing. I mean, I don't know how you brush your teeth, but it could potentially be long, but you know, a few minutes, whatever. And so it's this very manageable amount of time. And there are so many physical sensations going on that you can really sort of be mindful of and be present with. That's actually a perfect one to, to, um, to do. Yeah. And I know it's, it's just something that I know I do twice a day and it kind of starts my day, ends my day. And so it just kind of, it works for me. Yeah. I find myself sort of automatically doing that um, a lot of times throughout the day. I've, I've got, I've done this for so many years that I've, I get into this habit all the time of, of just, you know, stepping into this sort of like very sort of mindful state when I do things. So for me, it's become very natural, but it takes practice and it's, it's, um, you know, and it takes patience with yourself most of all. And when you, and when you, when you're doing that, when you're kind of doing your practice, you know, during these little everyday things that you do, what do you, what are you actually doing? I think it'd be helpful for people to understand a little bit deeper about what are you actually doing? What are you actually thinking about? What are you actually focusing on? Yeah. And actually that was, uh, that's one thing we're going to do today. We're going to do a little, um, uh, body sort of scan mindfulness practice and a little breathing. And those are some, some of the things that I do. I usually do a few breaths like, you know, a very specific type of breathing, very specific breaths. And then I sort of like close my, I close my eyes. I, I like to close my eyes. Some people like to keep their eyes open. It, you know, depends on what, what works for you. But I like to close my eyes because it allows me to turn sort of inward. And I kind of like 
take a nice deep inhalation with an exhalation i just really let everything relax and i feel i can literally feel myself getting heavy and just release and so i try to stay with that feeling for as long as i can and just scan through my body see how it feels you know so that's those are you know these short type kind of practices that just I, th I feel like they release a lot of tension you know it just it just when you get into the habit of it and you really focus on relaxing with the with the exhalation really focus on relaxing your body you can get to a point where you can really really feel it you can really feel the tension leave so that's what i like to do um, but we're going to we're going to do something a little more detailed that will give you a much better idea of what what i mean when i just with what i just said so um i'm wondering if um if everyone in this room is able to lie down on a floor where they are um, that would be ideal. Uh, if not, you can stay seated. But um, ideally, because we're going to do some um, body scanning that is sort of best done on the floor. Um, but if not, don't worry about it. Just stay where you are and just, you know, do the best you can with what you got. So um, the breath that um, I want to talk about today is called a double inhale um, breathing exercise. And this type of breathing um, is specifically for the reduction of stress. And I also want to quickly touch on um, the fact that as a society, we have become these like mouth breathers, right? Many people breathe excessively through their mouths for a variety of reasons. And our bodies have this incredible filtration system through our noses, right? There's like a ton of stuff that filters out everything from bacteria to viruses to dust to pollen to everything before it even gets to your lungs. And there are so many studies that have been done um, on the effect of um, breathing through your nose versus breathing through your mouth. And the, there's no doubt that breathing through your nose is incredibly beneficial for not just your immune system, but for your digestive health, for your mental health, for your concentration, all kinds of things. I mean, it's, it's pretty incredible, the studies that have been done. And um, there's also something um, when you inhale through your nose, your body actually, your, 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 I'm, I'm not a doctor, so I don't know if I'm medically explaining this correctly, it's, but it's, there are like little, uh, cells in your nasal passages that produce nitric oxide and nitric oxide um, is a is a dilator it, it dilates your blood vessels so everything gets more oxygen and you you get actually more oxygen if you're inhaling through your nose than when you're inhaling through your mouth and it's it's just incredible um, what, what the difference between nose breathing and mouth breathing. So I would like everyone to try to, as much as possible, breathe through your noses um, when you're doing these exercises. Any kind of exercise, breathing exercises that we do, unless specifically stated, should always be through your nose. And is that in through the nose and out through the nose? Yeah, you can do, um, in this particular exercise that we're doing, we're actually going to do in through the nose and then out through the mouth. But in general, um, we want to try in through the nose and out through the nose, unless specifically stated. Um, the one very important um, thing, and, and one of the reasons why so many people have trouble breathing through their noses is the placement of the tongue in the mouth. 
And you'll hear this a lot, like, you know, in, in like yoga classes and stuff like that, they'll say, put your tongue on to the roof of your mouth. And when you have your tongue on the roof of your mouth, and it's sort of like in between your top teeth, and it's, it's kind of touching, your entire tongue is touching the roof of the mouth, um, you cannot breathe through your mouth in that position, unless you release the tongue from the top of the, uh, of the palate. Um, so ideally, the tongue is always at the top of the mouth. And uh, so for some of you, that might be really odd, if you've never done that before, if you're not used to that, but just try the best you can to keep your tongue on the top of your palate, towards the top of the palate. So you're, the tip of your tongue is sort of behind your teeth and then the rest of the tongue is sort of against the upper palate. Eventually when you're breathing through your nose, it, it's really natural to have your tongue in that place. It, it's not odd anymore, but in the beginning it might feel strange. So, um, Shall we get started with the Sounds breathing? Good. Okay. So, um, like I said, this is a this is called a double breath, a double inhale. And what we're going to do is we're going to inhale through the nose as as much as you can. You're going to inhale it into your lungs, and then at the top, when you've inhaled as much as you think you can inhale, you're going to stop and you're going to take a really fast sniffing inhale so you're going like this and then you're going to hold it for a second and going to exhale slowly very slowly through the mouth we're going to try for about a double count on the exhale i'm going to try and make my breath a little audible i don't know if you guys will be able to hear it but so we'll get started with an inhale Is that pretty clear to everyone? Does that make sense? If you want to type something in the, if you need clarification or give me a thumbs up or something. All right, excellent. I see some thumbs up. Okay, so let's start. We'll do that for um, a few breaths. You can go at your own pace. Just try to have the exhalation be about twice the length of the inhalation. So let's start at your own pace.
Okay, so let's breathe normally again. So this particular breath, when we have, when we do the exhalation twice as long as the inhalation, it really sends the message to the brain that it's safe, it's time to relax and not be in our, you know, it, it, we, it gets us to our parasympathetic nervous system rather to our fight and flight um, situation. So did that, did that work for you guys? Was that okay? Yeah, that's Any, great. Anything, anything you want to share about that? Any difficulty, anything that you want to? One thing I always, one thing I always find when I'm really focusing on my breath at the, at the end of my exhalation, I always kind of just feel like a full body kind of almost tingling sensation. And I, I try to kind of focus on that because it's a, it kind of really helps me focus on my breath. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. So, um, this, this is a really good type of breath to do if you feel yourself going off the rails at any point in time during the day, you know, whether you're trading or you're doing anything else, if you start to feel, you start to become aware of certain emotions or something that you think can start to bubble and boil, this breath can really help you de-stress and, and really calm you down. So that's, that's a good one to have in the back pocket. Um, now, um, as far as the, um, the mindfulness practice now that we're, we're going to do, is it, are most people able to lie down or are we, are we all sitting? Oh, I, I was lying down for the breathing one. <laughs> oh, perfect, perfect. So if, if many of us are lying down, then it, it's actually, I, I mean, I, if everyone is like sitting, then I could modify it. But if, if more people are lying down, then I, I, I'm going to proceed as planned and do the, um, the um, relaxation and mindfulness. Okay, so assuming that everyone is in a, in a good relaxed position on the floor, I would invite you to close your eyes and start to breathe normally, not trying to control the breath, just breathing in and out through your nose, nice and smooth. Think of the breath as a circular movement, so there is no retention of the breath at the top or bottom, it all flows into one another smoothly. Your hands are by your side, palms are facing up and they're sort of slightly away from your body. Your legs are relaxed and your little toes are kind of flopping towards the floor. And we're going to start to become aware of certain parts of our body touching the floor. So if you're lying down, the back of your heels, your calves, your buttocks, your sacrum, going higher up, upper back, your shoulders, the back of the head, and the back of the arms, the back of the hands. Feel the contact with the, with the floor. See if you can get a sensation of melting into the floor with every exhalation. Releasing the muscles, becoming aware of any holding or tension that is going on. Just releasing it into the floor.
And then become aware of any parts of your body that are making a space with the floor, such as the back of your ankles, back of your knees, your lower back, back of the neck, and imagine those spaces becoming smaller and smaller with every exhalation as you are melting further into the floor. Now bring your awareness to your face. The tongue is resting on the upper palate. You're breathing in and out through your nose. Become aware of your jaw, make sure your jaw is relaxed. Become aware of the skin around your eyes. See if you can get a sensation of releasing that skin, those tiny little muscles all around the eyes that sometimes stay very tight and tensed. Let's start to become aware of our thoughts around this process. We try to approach this process without judgment, without expectation. Imagine you are lying down looking up at a sky full of clouds. And each time a thought arises that does not pertain to the mindfulness practice, just attach that thought to a cloud and let it drift away. Find your mind wandering off. Just gently bring it back to your body without judgment.
Slowly begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes. And start to bring yourself back and come back to seated position or to your chair or wherever you are. There we go. Everyone still with me? <laughs> I'm back. I'm back. All right. So that was a short, you know, what was it? Three, four minutes. Did everyone uh, have a good experience with that? Easy, difficult. Anyone want to share? It's it's a lot easier for me when when there's somebody guiding it, for sure. Yes. It definitely is. All right. Anyone? Oh yeah, I love the bells too. It's such a beautiful sound. I don't even know if that comes through really well through the microphone, but. Yeah, it kind it, of startled it, me out, honestly. <laughs> yeah, they really, they really vibrate in your in your whole body when you're was that like, one of those bowls no they're they're these um they're discs they're sort of like brass discs okay they're these um bells what do you what do you call the bowls with the things that you go around them singing bowl singing bowls okay yeah yeah they make beautiful sound too mm -hmm. so yeah so i don't know if anyone wants to share uh, anything, any experience that they had, or, or, or um, do you guys find that difficult to sort of focus, uh, you know, on your with your thoughts, or this idea of attaching the thoughts to the clouds and letting them drift away? Is that is that a good image? Maybe yeah, more? I mean, for me, I'll, and I want other people to jump in here too. I don't want to be the only one doing the talking, but. For me, yeah. I mean, I definitely, at first, my mind started wandering off. But um, like Andrew said, I, get, I got so relaxed that I almost drifted off, almost in a dream, dreamlike sleep state. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that can happen. I mean, I you know, it, it, it happens all the time in yoga class that people start to fall asleep during this kind of stuff. But as much as possible... We want to try and stay present in our bodies and just observe, you know, be, be an observer of, of what goes on in our minds and, and, you know, what happens when we become quiet with ourselves. That, that can be very difficult, especially for people who are, have never done this before and who ha don't have a lot of experience with that that can be a really difficult concept to be quiet with yourself but um yeah so that's how we start little baby steps at a time great stuff yeah. that's all i got for today <laughs> okay um before we go does anybody have anything they want to share any and anybody want to get on the mic and Speak instead of chat. Feel free. Now's your chance. I just wanted to say thank you so much for doing this. I, I really enjoyed it. I wasn't able to come to the first one. Thank you. It really was great. Oh, you're welcome. Welcome. Glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, this is no. great. And and I know, I mean, I think one, one thing I'll do, I mean, I, I, I would pro I'll probably listen to this replay and kind of redo it again. You know, I, I just, that the whole guided piece of it is, is a big help for me. Um, so hopefully, hopefully others can yeah. do the same if and, they want. And as, as you know, we get more comfortable, um, and, and the process becomes more clear and easier, we can obviously extend the time of this, you know, we don't have to keep it so short. We can do a little bit longer. Um, just initially, I think it's it's easiest for everyone to just sort of get their feet wet and 
you know, keep it short and sweet and just, um, you know, sit with that. Let your body sort of sit with that and, and your mind sit with that and get comfortable with the idea of turning inside and going into yourself and, and being quiet and, yeah. Great stuff. Well, I know for me, I mean, I've, <clears throat> you know, I kind of, this this weekly session is going to help me get back into more consistency and and with this kind of thing consistency is is a huge deal so that's uh that's part of what i'm i'm most excited about yeah as as with anything right and we know all about consistency and as traders right right so um yeah consistency is what will um what will sort of supercharge this experience and you know if you uh, you know if you find the time to do this on your own and um, just remember what we did or, or listen to it again and um, you know that'll that'll help good stuff it looks like a couple of people are typing so I will uh, want to make sure we get their questions answered before we head out But I'm I'm really glad that you uh, suggested this whole thing, Bianca. I think it's uh, I think it's great. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm glad I did too. It, it's fun for me because it's you know it's in my wheelhouse, so um, it's nice to be able to share that. Somebody still Excellent. typing. Well, it looks like. Into Money Honey is still typing, so... Oh, there we go. I am familiar with this as I'm a yoga teacher as well, but love that you're bringing this into the trading space. It's so needed. Absolutely. Couldn't agree, awesome. Couldn't yeah, agree more. Awesome. Very cool. All right, everyone. Well, we will... Uh, Trader Bianca, is it next week, next Thursday, 30 minutes after the bell, next Thursday the 8th? Is that good for... Oh, excuse me, today's the 8th. Next Thursday, the 15th, same time, same place? Same time, same place. All right, perfect. All right. So 30 minutes after the bell, 3.30 Central, next Thursday, June 15th, we'll do, the, we'll do another session. Great, thanks. thanks for coming. All right, everybody, take care. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thank you, take care.